Praise the Lord. God bless you. My name is Brother Livingston Stuart Thomas. I am here as a messenger of the Word of God to give to you today the message from the Lord that the Lord has given unto me over the last couple of weeks that I have been speaking to those who are willing to hear the Word of God and the message from the Lord. And I just want to get going right quick. I thank God for you, you, and you, and you, and you, and you in the back that are watching here on TV through the Victory Productions broadcast. That's right. Pastor Barry and Linda Jackson are doing a great work with Victory Productions. And I just find it a great, and it is a great privilege to be able to come to you to be invited to give you this, that which the Lord has given unto me, the message for today. Let's get started right quick. Uh, I want to let you know once again that the message is this. Despite what just recently happened, stay focused on the kingdom of God. I'm talking about what recently happened in current events, whether it's happened here in the Fairfield County area, state of Connecticut, where we're at, or in the United States or the world. And you know there are things that are going on in the world right now that everybody's panicked over and things that have happened even in D.C. Uh, with this uh, presidential administration. Uh, despite what just recently happened, everybody, all of us, the body of Christ needs to stay focused on the kingdom of God. I'm going to get into this message, this word from the Lord. I'm going to give you the definition of the word focus and the definition of the word kingdom. I'm going to give you scripture, and I particularly love coming from the Amplified Bible. It opens it up a lot more for me to get a better understanding, and I will then go, go forth as the Lord leads in the name of Jesus. Okay, praise the Lord. Let's get started with the definitions. Okay. The definition of focus in the noun uh, of the word focus is a central point as of attraction, attention, or activity. Uh, a phrase is the need to prevent a nuclear war became the focus of all diplomatic efforts. That's the way the word, the noun of the word focus is applied. Now the verb of the word focus, uh, which is used with an object meaning focused or focusing, uh, is to bring to a focus or into focus, cause to converge on a perceived point, uh, to focus the lens of a camera. So the verb, action word, is the actual moving or the thing that you use with an object. Uh, another one is to direct one's attention or efforts. Students must focus in class. Okay, praise the Lord. That's focus. Kingdom, praise God, a country, state, or territory ruled by a king or queen. The spiritual reign of authority of God. The rule of God or Christ in a future age. That's what the definition is. Heaven as the abode of God and of the faithful after death. This is kingdom. Each of the three traditional divisions of kingdom, animal kingdom, vegetable kingdom, and mineral kingdom, in which natural objects have conventionally been classified. So kingdom it's basically the reign territory, uh, the 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 ap, ap, uh, the category of certain things, basically or divisions. It said traditional divisions. Okay, the word kingdom. I want to make this clear though occurs in the Bible 342 times in 316 verses in the Bible. So the word kingdom is all through the Bible, all through the Bible from from start to finish. The kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, kingdom of man. All through the Bible. Okay, praise the Lord. Okay, right now, I'm going to get into the Word of God. I'm going to give you scriptures. I'm going to give you uh, quite a few of them, but you'll understand when I put it all together about staying focused on the kingdom of God. That's the subject. Stay focused on the kingdom of God. Matthew 3, coming from verse 1 through 3, and I'm going to go down to verse 11 through 17 in the Amplified Bible. I come from the Amplified Bible. Matthew 3, starting at verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist appeared, preaching in the wilderness of Judea along the western side of the Dead Sea and saying, Repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking. Regret past sins. Live your life, your old way of thinking and your regretting of your past sins. Live your life in a way that proves repentance. Seek God's purpose for your life, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Once again, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Praise the Lord. Verse 3, 
This is the one who was mentioned by the prophet Isaiah when he said, the voice of one shouting in the wilderness, wilderness, prepare the road for the Lord, make his way straight, level, direct. Let's go down to verse 11, Matthew 3, verse 11. As for me, I baptize you with water because of your repentance. That is because you are willing to change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret your sin, and live a changed life. But he, the Messiah, who is coming after me, is mightier, more powerful, more noble than I, whose sandals, sandals, I am not worthy to remove even as his slave. He will baptize you who truly repent. He will baptize you who truly repent with the Holy Spirit and you who remain unrepentant with fire judgment. Verse 12, his winnowing fork is in his hand and he will thoroughly clear out his threshing floor and he will gather his wheat believers into his barn kingdom but he will burn up the chaff, the unrepentant, with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan River to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, vigorously protesting, saying, It is I who need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus replied to him, Permit it just now. For this is the fitting way for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John permitted it and baptized him. Verse 16, after Jesus was baptized, he came up immediately out of the water, and behold, the heavens were open, and he, John, saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him, Jesus. And behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and delighted. As you know, that is the baptism of Jesus Christ. It's the start of his journey to the cross for the sins of mankind. But it had to be done this way and in this order. This is the start of the, 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 the earthly reign of Jesus' ministry. He's got to get, he's got to go get baptized to get it done from John the Baptist, who you know is his cousin. And he has to get it done to get it started. This is the way it's got to be done. John was like, no, I'm not worthy. But J Jesus said, this time you got to do it. This is the only way it's going to get done so we can get it started. And so John baptized him. Okay. Matthew 4, verses 12 through 17. Now, starting at verse 12. Now, when Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been arrested and put in prison, he left for Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he went and settled in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the country of Zebulun and Naphtali. This was to fulfill that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee, in the district of the Gentiles, the people, 16, the people who were sitting, living in spiritual darkness, have seen a great light. And for those who were sitting, living in the land in shadow of spiritual and moral death, Upon them a light has dawned, talking about Jesus. From the time Jesus began to preach and say, repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret past sins, live your life in a way that proves repentance, seek God's purpose for your life, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Here's where Jesus now takes over from John the Baptist. He finds out that King Herod has put John the Baptist in prison and the scripture here shows that what did Jesus not do? He didn't run to the jail to bail out John the Baptist. He proceeded on with what his ministry was. His kingdom assignment of God was underway, and he went on to Capernaum and Zebulun and Naphtali. He had to continue on. Despite what had happened with his cousin John the Baptist, he had to proceed on with his assignment, his heavenly assignment from God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to get into that. I'll, I'll wrap it all up uh, when I'm done reading scripture. Matthew 5, 1 through 11, amplified. Matthew 5, 1 through 11 at the first verse. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them, saying, Blessed, spiritually prosperous, happy to be admired, are the poor in spirit, 
those devoid of spiritual arrogance, those who regard themselves as insignificant. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. Blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace are those who mourn over the sins, over their sins. Let me read it again. Blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace are those who mourn over their sins and repent. For they will be comforted when the burden of sin is lifted. Amplified Bible. Blessed, verse 5, inwardly peaceful, spiritually secure, worth of respect are the gentle, the kind-hearted, the sweet-spirited, the self-controlled, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed, obviously you know this is the Beatitudes. Blessed, <laughs> joyful, nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Those who actively seek right standing with God, for they will be completely satisfied. Verse 7, blessed, content, sheltered by God's promise, promises are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. 8, blessed, anticipating God's presence, spiritually mature are the pure in heart, those with integrity, moral courage, and godly character, for they will see God. 9, blessed, spiritually calm, with life joy in God's favor are the makers and maintainers of peace, for they will express his character and be called the sons of God. Blessed, verse 10, comforted by inner peace in God's love are those who are persecuted, for those are those who are persecuted, are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. 11, blessed, woo, morally courageous and spiritually alive with life, joy, and God's goodness. Are you, are you, when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of your association with me? I should read that again. Blessed, morally courageous and spiritually alive with life joy in God's goodness are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of your association with me. Verse 12, be glad and exceedingly joyful for your reward in heaven is great absolutely inexhaustible for in this same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Praise God. Matthew 5, 1 through 12, that you know is the Beatitudes. Let me continue on. Got a couple more scriptures and I'm going to wrap it up. Matthew 6, verse 21 through 23. Remember, despite what has recently happened, stay focused on the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 21 no, no, let me get this right. Matthew 6, Matthew 6, Matthew 6, yep. Matthew 6, 30 through 34. Got it right, written wrong here, but Matthew 6, 30 through 34. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive and green today, and tomorrow is cut and thrown as fuel into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted, saying, what are we going to eat, or what are we going to drink, or what are we going to wear? 32, for the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, but do not worry, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first, ah, uh, but first, and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right the attitude and character of God for all these things will be given to you also. You know that scripture, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. Let me read it again in the Amplified. I like that one. But first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God and all these things will be given to you also. 34, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. My God, my God. Woo! 
moving on. Matthew 11. 11 through 15. My God, I'm going to wrap it up. Watch. I assure you and most solemnly, verse 11, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater in privilege than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent assault and violent men seize it by force as a precious prize. For all the prophets and the law prophesied up until John. He fulfilled the, the prophecies. Technically, John does not get to see what Jesus is really going to do because he gets arrested and then he is later beheaded. He won't see the work of Jesus on the earth. He will not see Jesus and the masses of people coming to him. He won't see Jesus arrested and nailed to the cross. He does not get to see Jesus rise up on the third day. He does not get to see Jesus ascend into heaven. From the days of John the Baptist until now, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent assault and violent men seize it by force as a precious prize. King James Version, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent violence and the violent take it by force. Praise God. For all the prophets and the law prophesied up until John. And if you are willing to accept it, John himself is the fulfillment of Elijah as the messenger who was to come before the kingdom. He who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. Praise God. Matthew 16, 21 through 23, amplified, still in the amplified. From the time, from that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples clearly that he must go to Jerusalem and endure many things at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and scribes, Sanhedrin, Jewish high court, and be killed and be raised from death to life on the third day. Check this out now. Peter, whoo, Peter, took him aside to speak to him privately. What? And began to reprimand him, saying, May God forbid it. This will never happen to you. Verse 23, But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. It's going to be my last scripture. Get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block. You're not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Praise God. Stay focused on the kingdom of God and stay focused on God's assignment for your life. Pray. And ask God for a clear revelation of his kingdom for your life. Not for my life, your life. A glimpse, and I'm just going to share a little testimony, a glimpse of understanding of the kingdom of God happened to me at a conference in Bruton, Alabama, way back in 2011. And now, all of the parable scriptures that Jesus spoke by first saying, kingdom of heaven is likened unto... The kingdom of heaven is likened unto. The kingdom of heaven is this. The kingdom of heaven is that. Became more alive and clearer to me than ever before. It's how God's kingdom operates and how we, how we, we, the body of Christ should operate and conduct ourselves in doing the will of God here in the earth realm. I'm grateful to God for Jesus sharing uh, the powerful knowledge uh, godly knowledge to us all. Praise God. I'm going to stop right there and just really wind it up by saying this. What's going on out there in the world, outside your door, what's going outside the doors of the church, what's going outside in the land across this country, you know what's going on out there. We need to stay focused on the kingdom of God. You need to stay and have a clear focus. Don't panic. If you've been panicking about a virus, stop panicking. Trust God. Seek God and get started. If you haven't started doing your kingdom assignment, I encourage you now to get going on your kingdom assignment. I'm doing mine. I'm here in front of this camera doing my assignment today. I encourage you to get moving on your kingdom assignment. Trust me, there's a lot of more other things going on besides a virus and the, uh, 
how do I say that? The executive branch of the government of this country, which is the presidency and all the other government officials and all kinds of things that you see happening with the debates and the candidates and things like that, get busy doing your kingdom godly assignment. I come to you in love, begging you, beseeching you, my brothers and sisters, get moving. Get moving. If you're worried, get moving. If you don't know what's going to happen and you're anxious, I encourage you to get moving. Got to repent and get focused on God's kingdom. Lord, what is your kingdom assignment for me here in the earth realm? Lord, guide me. And when the Lord tells you, if the Lord has not already told you, when the Lord has, when he tells you, get moving. Don't hesitate. Don't turn around and say, well, I heard you, Lord, but let me go back and pray to you. No. When God say, go, go. I'm telling you, the Lord has been dealing with me about that. His word has already said, go ye into the highways and the hedges and compel men to come into my life, into, into my, in, in, not only into Jesus' life, but into his house. He said to go. He didn't say get back down and pray. He said go. He didn't say for you, me, I'm not doing it. He didn't say for you to start praying to him to order him to go into the prison, into the hospital, into the school. He told you to go. He told me to go. I'm going. I'm going to do what the Lord has told me to do, and I'm encouraging you to go do what the Lord told you to do. You know what he told you to do. Get up and get going. Don't worry about that virus. We know what's going on, and the Lord's dealing with that. If the Lord is shaking up the world like he said he would, fine. He's shaking it up for us to get busy about the kingdom work that he has for us. We are here in the earth realm. We are alive, the body of Christ, and I come to you in love. I'm, I'm just sharing my love. I'm just sharing you as a brother. I love you, care about you, but we all have to get moving. If you got mission work to do, get work on your mission, whatever it is. If you got to bring a, a plate of food to somebody, bring the plate of food. If you can't open up the food pantry, bring a plate of food to somebody. If you don't have the wherewithal to, you, you don't have the, uh, uh, the, the, where you're able to take in clothing, go buy some clothes and just donate it to the mission or the shelter. Do something for somebody, but get moving on your missionary, get moving on your, the will, excuse me, get moving on what your assignment is for the kingdom of God. Please, I encourage you. I have another message here in my notes about the master of the house is coming back. You know about the master who gave the talents to the three servants, and he went to a far country long enough for those, those servants to do something with those talents, and we know what happened when he came back. Hey, we have to answer. We're going to give an answer. We're going to give an answer. I'm going to keep repeating it. We are going to give an answer for what God has assigned to us to do, and he's going to check us. Did you do what I told you to do? And if you turn around and say, I went in the backyard, into the shed, got me a digging shovel and a towel from the bathroom, took your talent, wrapped it up, and I put it in a, in a, in a, in a hole, covered it up for you when you come back, there's going to be, it's, it's going to be bad. And if you know the scripture, you know, the, the brother got bound up, head and foot, cast in the outer darkness. You know it. So I'm here in love. I'm not rebuking. I'm just saying in love, brother, sister, young, old, uh, pulpit to the door, elders, officers, whatever your capacity, department heads, trustees, the will of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Ask God his will for your life. Get moving. If Jesus Christ... My Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Yeshua, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, he had to go down the Jordan River to be baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist, to start his earthly ministry, which is going to lead him to the tragic, brutal, violent, cruel death, bloody death on the cross? What makes you think that you you, <laughs> you, I, we are going to be just, you know, God's going to be, oh, don't worry about it. Hey, you know, Jesus took care of all that. No, we have a work to do also. And we may have to suffer at the hands of man. We may get arrested, might get beat up. I read you scripture that if you get talked about for righteousness sake, it's going to happen. Why? Because it happened to Jesus first. So we have a work to do. 
get busy. I'm encouraging you in love. My brothers and sisters, please get to work. You find out what the Lord wants you to do, get moving on it. It is time out. Time out. You know what's going on. You, if you turn it on the news, if you, if you, you got the internet, you got your phone. Let me hold that up. You got your phone. You got your tablet. You got your computer. You got your laptop. You got all that. So you know what's going on out here. Be mindful of the times. Be move. It, it just move, move, move quickly to do the work that God has called you to do. Whatever you find your hands to do, do it with all your might. Do it as unto the Lord. Give God your all for him. Let God use your hands. I, my feet are under the table. I'm holding them up right now. Trust me. You let, let God use your hands. Let him use your feet. Be a mouthpiece. And, and don't be afraid. Let me encourage you with this real quick. Don't be afraid where God the Holy, let me say it like this. Don't be afraid where the Holy Ghost leads you. The Holy Ghost may lead you into areas that you might feel uncomfortable, but there may be nobody representing God. The Spirit of God may not be represented in that area. It could be a place at the job, the school, wherever. Don't be afraid of that. I encourage you, don't be afraid of that because the Lord, the, the Lord trusts you and has given you his word. His Spirit is in you so that you can be a light. Remember, I read where he went to Naphtali and he went to the Zebulun and it said those people were in the shadow. They were in dark and now a light has come to them. You, me, we are that light. And if the Lord sends us into areas that you may, for me, I'm okay with it because I've been in those areas representing Jesus Christ and just opening my mouth, letting people know I'm born again. I'm a baptized believer filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm representing. I'm going to walk upright, live upright. I'm going to do what's right because I want the Lord to use me as his representative. I don't have to, I don't need the big, oh, the accolades and oh, I don't need all that. I just want to be used by you, Lord. Use me, Lord. I'm here. I'm available. I'm willing. I got another message about being having a willing mind. You got to first have a willing mind. You got to have an obedient heart. I'm available. So I'm staying focused on the kingdom. And, and I'm telling you, and love my brothers and sisters, please stay focused on God's kingdom. Don't panic. Don't get caught up in the panic. Realize what ha is happening. Move on what the Lord has told you to do. Get going on it. You can pray about it, but get moving. When you get done praying, get up and get going. Because one of the things that God didn't tell me to do, and I don't read it in his word, where I'm supposed to go pray and order him, order God to go to the hospital, to go to the prison, to go to the shelter, to go to the orphanage. I don't read that. I don't read where I'm supposed to pray and order God to go out there on them streets and, and, and tell God, uh, tell people about the gospel. I read where it says, go, go, go. Therefore, go ye into the highways and the hedges and compel men to come into my house. That's all God wants from us. He wants us to love one another as he have loved us. He wants us, he said in his word, if you love me, keep my commandments. And if the commandment is go ye, go ye. God bless you. God bless you. My name is Brother Livingston Stewart Thomas. I'm just coming here to give you a message from the word of God, despite what just recently happened. Stay focused on the kingdom of God. God bless you. You have a great day.